Welcome to the Rise of the Trades podcast, the show dedicated to helping you to build, grow, and scale your trades or construction business. All rise for your host, Craig Wilkinson. Welcome to this week's coaching episode of the Rise of the Trades podcast, where we help trades and construction business owners to skyrocket leads, explode net profits without having to graft six day hours a week. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you the five killer mistakes that are stopping you from generating leads coming into your trades or construction business. So if you're investing your time and money into any form of marketing and you're not generating an avalanche of quality leads that's now leaving you feeling frustrated or even worse, out of pocket, then you need to listen to this coaching episode in its entirety. But before we go there, I just want to make you aware that the doors have now opened for our next intake on my Inner Circle Marketing and Business Coaching Program. So if you're a trades or construction business owner and you've hit a level or a ceiling point in your business where you just can't seem to get it to that next level. Maybe you're working too many hours. Maybe you're not making enough profit. Maybe you can't find the right team or put the right systems in place into your business. Then please consider applying for my Inner Circle Coaching Program. The link is in the description around this podcast episode for you to click and discover more. Now, let's transition over to this week's coaching episode. We all know that the lifeblood to all of our businesses lies in the form of lead generation. If we are not generating the right quality leads, one, we've not got enough work coming in to keep ourselves going as we are now. But two, if them leads aren't increasing week in, week out or month in, month out, we're never going to scale as business and grow it because the leads aren't coming in to allow us to do it. Now, how time consuming and frustrating is it creating marketing content? Because let's face it, it does take time and it can be soul destroying when you invest time, effort and money into marketing and then it just doesn't generate you any leads. Now listen, there are two areas of your business that if you get wrong, I'll tell you now, it's going to milk you dry of your time and your money. The first one is marketing and the second one is team. You bring the wrong team in and the wrong team is going to cost you time and money. Now listen, over the last 30 plus years of me running my businesses, I've made some terrible mistakes when it comes to marketing that's cost me dear. And when I say these figures, I genuinely mean it. I have wasted hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of time and money marketing my business in the wrong way. Me thinking, oh, if I just go and jump onto this fad or this trend that everybody else seems to be doing and I just start doing this, this and this, all of a sudden I'll get this avalanche of leads that I'm praying and hoping for. And then what happens? Nothing happens. Now, listen, there is no quick fix when it comes to marketing. There is no magic wand. There is no silver bullet. Marketing takes time. But if that time is invested into the right proven strategies that are guaranteed to work for trades and construction businesses specifically, then the time that you're going to invest is going to pay dividends. And this is where I were at in my construction company 18 years ago, where I tried just about everything that were out there. And for some reason, it just didn't work. Yeah, I were getting the leads coming in, but the leads were only coming in and getting us to the growth that we were at at that point. But I got drive, I got passion, I got ambition. I wanted to set my business to another level, but I couldn't do it because I wasn't getting the leads. So 18 years ago, 
having wasted all this time and money and being promised the world by all these different marketing agencies, like they do, I thought, screw this. I'm going to learn all this myself. I'm going to learn all the most cutting edge and most powerful marketing strategies. And then I'm going to implement them into my business. And I did. And what happened? I built, I grew, I sold a profitable construction business. And now I use those same strategies, albeit marketing has changed. It's moved with the times. You know, we've got AI and all these fancy things that are happening now, but I've stayed and maintained and I've been on the top of it all. So all my businesses are run through the same strategies that I share with you on these episodes. And since 2012, I've stood on over 500 different stages and taught over 30,000 tradesmen and women these strategies on how to generate pre-sold, ready-to-buy customers. Now, we use and teach over 30 different marketing strategies to get this right. So the strategy that I'm going to share with you today is not just the strategy on what you need to be doing moving forward, but more importantly, the strategy of what the hell you're doing wrong now. Because I can pinpoint exactly what will be going wrong in each one of these five areas I'm going to share with you now. So if you are frustrated with your marketing, if the leads aren't coming in, and you're spending your hard-earned cash on trying to get the leads in, it's down to one or all of these five mistakes that I'm going to share with you right now. And on top of that, what I'm sharing with you is not going to cost you a single penny. This is not going to cost you any investment of money into your business. All this is going to take is a little bit of your time to go away and look at these five mistakes, identify the ones that you're making, and then start to put these right. Because without putting these right, we can't bring in and introduce the other marketing strategies until we fix these mistakes that you've currently got. Now, some of you will know my inner circle member, Jamie Curtin. Jamie joined my inner circle and was a director of Hydro Heat, a plumbing and heating business in Coventry. And Jamie joined the programme and having taught him all these skills and all the other marketing skills and other business skills, we got Jamie to a point where he built, he grew, he scaled, and then eventually we got him to a point where he sold his plumbing and eating business. What Jamie then did and what I helped him do is set up another business from scratch in an industry that he wasn't even experienced in. He had this idea, we ran with it, and used the same marketing strategy in a business where he got no budget, to invest into it and no skill at that time in that industry. And all he's done is applied the same strategies as what I've taught him into that business and just listen to what Jamie said about the results that he's had and he's not even invested one pound into this strategy. So yeah, you know, a few months ago, I set up a brand new business, completely new industry for me where I had absolutely no leads whatsoever, no customers. Um, but obviously for everything that I learned from you and everything that I implemented, I was then overloaded with leads, you know, got completely sold out, couldn't possibly keep up with the demand. Um, and this has all been done, you know, without a website, you know, the first thing you think of is I need a website, but we didn't bother with the website. We just built the landing pages and, you know, the strategy just worked. You know, it's, honestly, can't believe the results that I've had. It's been absolutely amazing. So as you can hear, we went from having zero customers to be sold out and Jamie didn't even have a website at this point. Now for you to get to this level, you've got to first of all fix these five mistakes. And if you're a new or newish business like Jamie was setting up, you've just hit 
and struck gold because you will not go out and make the same classic mistakes that established businesses have done. You'll not have to make those mistakes as long as you stick to what I share with you in this episode. Now, I'm also going to make reference to three other podcasts that have already been shot on the live. And what I want you to do is go back to these three podcasts at the end of this one, because these three podcasts are going to go into so much more specific detail into three of these five mistakes that you've made and will help you rectify them quickly. So grab your notepads, grab your pens and your tablets, get making notes and let's get stuck in. So let's turn our attention over to what these five mistakes that you will be making within your marketing. And whether it's one of these mistakes that you're making or all five of them that are making, you need to get these put right and you need to get these right put quick because this is like the foundation of your marketing. Everything sits on this. And if we get this wrong, whatever content, whatever we create moving forward is not going to be right, hence the reason why we're not going to generate more leads. So mistake number one, I want you to write down old school marketing. Old school marketing. In this noisy, chaotic, mad world that we're living in, in this digital world where Everybody screaming and fighting for a split second of attention from your target market. It's just getting messy. And right now, you've got competitors that whilst you're listening to this episode are posting videos. They might be posting blogs. They might be putting posts on social media. They might be creating lead magnets. They're out there creating content and we're all screaming for this little bit of attention. And what I'm saying to you is this. Most people are using old school marketing tactics that might have worked five years ago. They might have even worked 12 months ago, but they're not working now because technology, because marketing strategies, because the way in which the world is fast moving with all these different AI tools and things like that, everything is moving so fast that the old school marketing tactics are now getting left behind. You see, most people are sat under this marketing comfort blanket where they've done whatever marketing activity that they've done, which has brought their business to where they are right now. But where they are right now and the lead generation they're currently doing is not going to cut the mustard and it's not going to work moving forward. And let's face it, even if you could maintain the amount of leads coming in now, but your ambition is to grow and scale your business, you're never going to do it because you need more leads coming in, more quality leads coming into your business if you're going to grow and scale it. So what is your plan? What is your attract strategy all mapped out to start to attract more of your target market in their highest concentration coming to you and your business? What is it? What are you doing different to everyone else? How are you standing out? How are you building your authority? How are you standing out in such a way that you're now starting to attract more potential customers to your business? taking business away from your competitors because that's what they're going to be doing to you if you don't up your game pretty quick. They're going to end up stealing all the leads because let me tell you now, while ever you're sat under this comfort blanket, and I mean this with the utmost respect, my inner circle members are out there now introducing all these strategies, their new attract strategy, they're into all these different new marketing strategies that are now starting to generate them an avalanche of leads. But most people are just sat there doing the same boring bog standard marketing. Oh, let me put a post on my business Facebook page and then let me share it onto my personal page, hoping and praying that people see that I've got a business and they go over to my business page and they like my business page and buy from me. I mean, come on, that's like old school. 
don't tell me that you're just relying on putting odd posts out on Facebook and you've got a website and you're advertising a local magazine and you go to odd networking event. Don't tell me that that's what your attract strategy is because it's never going to work moving forward. Things are moving. Things are fast paced. Everything's changing. Business is changing. People are getting more impatient and you have got to position yourself and your business as the expert and the authority in such a way that people start to take notice of you and not all the crappy or the boring marketing old school tactics that people are still using in today's day and age. And when we start to review our Inner Circle members' existing marketing strategy and we look at it, it's like we can pinpoint straight away why it's not working. And a lot of it, a lot of the time, it's because you're no different to your competitors. So why should people choose you over the over your competitors? And then with my marketing agency, Leadzilla, we have people come to us and say, Craig, you know, I'm not generating leads uh, I want to know why and what do we need to do to fix it? So we'll look at it and first thing we'll say is, well, hang on a minute. First thing is, where's your videos? Well, what, what do you mean? Well, where's your introduction video? Where's your video testimonials? Where's your how-to videos? Where's your authority videos? Where's your before and after videos? Where's your YouTube channel? Where's your TikToks? Where's your Reels? Where's your Facebook Lives? Where's your Instagram Lives? Oh, oh I, I, I'm not doing any of that. Why? Oh, I don't like the way I sound and look and my mates are going to take the piss out of me. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Or then we'll say, well, hang on a minute. Where's all your automated email and SMS marketing campaigns that you should be doing in today's day and age? Oh, Craig, yeah, I've heard about them, but I'm not tech savvy and all this software and all these things. I, I don't really get it. I'm not tech savvy. And then I'll say to them, okay, fair enough. So what's your SEO strategy to attract organic leads to your business? Like what's all your keywords and your research? Give me all your reports that you've had done by your SEO company or your web company around the SEO to your website or your blog articles or your vlogs or how you YouTube, how are you SEO in your YouTube videos and tagging them up? What's the keyword research? Are you using TubeBuddy? And they'll go, what I, I, I've no idea. All, all I know is I'm paying me. Uh, I'm paying me web designer three hundred or five hundred quid a month, and he's supposed to be doing SEO, but it's not working. And then I'll say, okay, well, where's your lead magnets? What are lead magnets? What do you mean? What are lead magnets? Surely you know what lead magnets are in today's day and age as a tradesperson marketing your business. Where's all your free content that you're giving away on your website? Where's the free guides? Where's the free ebooks? Where's the free videos that people have to opt into? to give you their email address that brings them into an automated email marketing campaign? Where's all your lead magnets? I ain't got any. Okay, so what about all the new AI technology that we've all got at our disposal? How are you using that and how have you introduced that into your business? Oh, Craig, I ain't got a clue about AI. It just fries me brain. And I'm sat there thinking, fucking hell, you're supposed to be building and growing a business that's going to look after you and your family for the next 40 years, but you're not even doing the basic stuff that some people were doing two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. Come on, wake up. You are in charge and it's your responsibility of generating leads coming into your business. You need to understand these strategies. You need to learn them. You need to implement them. Also, otherwise, you're not going to generate the right leads. And if the leads aren't coming in, you're not going to have the work. And if the work's not coming in, you're going to have to start laying your staff off and reducing your overheads and downscaling your business that you sweat of blood in. And when you start to do that, you don't make as much money. And then because you're not making as much money, you get yourself in financial difficulties. Do you see where this leads to? You've got to be relentless with your marketing. You've got to be at the forefront of all these new marketing technologies and strategies to take your business, in fact, not to take it to a whole new level, just to maintain what you've got in today and age, you've got to start implementing this. And right now, there's so many people out there at the time of me shooting this podcast that have said in this year, 2024, that leads have started to slow down or they've started to see a dip in leads. And I say to them, yeah, 
Of course there is. This were always going to happen this year. We've got the hangover and the backlog of COVID. We've got the uh, utilities and prices, the cost of living crisis. Everything's gone up. So therefore, the consumer is going to start tightening up the, the purse strings, which is going to have a knock-on effect. So what have you done to counteract that? Share with me what you've now done. What have you introduced into your marketing strategy? What are you now doing different? How are you now getting noticed? How are you doing things different to your competitors? What are you doing? And most people are going, well, I'm not doing anything different. And I'm like, wake up, for goodness sake. If you're not doing anything different and things outside of your control, like the economy starts to change, surely you've got to change your approach. If you don't change your approach, you're going to see a negative effect and a negative impact happening in your business. And that's what's starting to happen. So the first thing I want you to do in your notes is write these two words down. Because these two words are who you've got to become moving forward. Because before you can get the tools out of the van and go and do that job, or before your team can get the tools out of the van and go and do that job, you first got to have generated a lead. But to generate that lead, you must have first created some form of marketing content for that potential customer or client to have seen to draw them to your business, right? So before you become the joiner, the sparkade, the plumber, the roofer, the plasterer, the landscape gardener, the two words that you need to become, write these down, is a content creator, a content creator. Because in today's day and age, every trades business owner has got to become a content creator over and above what all the other content their competitors are currently creating. Because if you don't create different types of content and we don't start moving with the times, we're not going to generate the leads. And if we don't generate the leads, we don't win the business. And if we don't win the business, the negative knock-on effect starts to happen and things start to spiral out of control. But by the time you get to that point and you realise, hang on a minute, I should have been doing this a while ago, your competitors, i.e. my inner circle members, have been doing this for years and now the gap between you and them is so vast, you can't catch them up. So now you've got a struggling business, but they're flying because they've introduced everything. Why? Because they've taken it into their subconscious part of their brains that they need to become a content creator before they become the tradesperson. And that's what we've got to get into our mindsets moving forward. We've got to become a content creator. Now, you might be saying, Craig, I hear you. I get you. And you know what? When I think about it, you're right. But where do I get this content from? Where do I find the knowledge and the strategies? Well, listen, this is the exact reason why I've put this podcast together. All of these coaching episodes that I put onto this podcast are free. Go to the marketing topic tag on our website, on our podcast website, Click the marketing topic tag and that'll filter out the marketing episodes. Go and fill your boots. I give it all away for free in bite-sized chunks. You've just got to go and take this knowledge on board, put some time inside your default diary to implement these strategies into your business and get moving with it. Because otherwise, you are going to be too far behind that you're going to be left with all the scraps of work that are out there and you don't want to be working for people that want to pay you peanuts. You want to be working for people that are prepared to pay you that extra, extra bit that makes you more profit for a quality service. But you're never going to get that extra bit. You're never going to position yourself as the, the market expert and the leader in your town or city for your products or services you're offering, if your marketing and your branding doesn't represent that, you're never going to charge the top bucks, the top dollar to make the top profit margins. You're going to be left in a race to the bottom where you're left with the customers 
that are time wasters and penny pinchers, and then it's a race to the bottom then on who can do the job the quickest for the least amount of money. And you do not want to be there, do you? So mistake number one is old school marketing. Identify all the different areas of your marketing that you need to improve. Then go and consume all the marketing content on this podcast, right? And then go and start implementing all of the new marketing tactics that work. Mistake number two. I want you to write down target market, target market. In other words, you have not identified who your target market is specifically for each of the products or the services that you offer. Because some of you will be offering a product and service to B to C, business to consumer. In other words, the domestic market. Others, you'll be B to B, business to business. So you might be doing work with the commercial sector. Or you might have a business that actually works with both B to C and B to B target markets. Now, because you've not drilled down specifically into these areas and you don't know what the nine different characteristics are that make up your B2B and your B2C target market, what you're doing with all the marketing content that you're creating across everything that you're doing is you're being far too generic. In other words, you're trying to market to everybody and anybody that needs an electrician or everybody and anybody that needs a building contractor. Are you with me? So you're spreading your marketing message way too thin because you're trying to market everything that you do in your business to everybody, hoping and praying that whatever content you're creating, some of it is going to stick and somebody's going to see something somewhere and automatically generate your lead. Well, the quickest way for you to waste your time and money is marketing generically to everyone and not niching down and saying to yourself, hang on a minute, my three, four, maybe five most profitable products or services that I offer are A, B, C, D and E. Let me look at each product or service and let me identify the exact target market for each one of them products and services that I offer. Because just because you are an electrician, as an example, doesn't mean to say that your target market for your electrical services are the exact same for each of the services that you offer. They're different. Let me give you an example. Let's use a sparker. Let's use an electrical contractor as an example. And let's say for argument's sake that this electrical contractor has worked out that the most profitable services that he offers are the following five, okay? So service number one, he does general electrical work. So something like changing a light switch or a plug socket for Mrs. Jones, who's the retired old dear who lives around the corner, Right? that is his target market for that product or service. Let's say that he's got another service and the second one is he does electrical inspections and testing and reports. Well, that's a different target market to Mrs. Jones perhaps around the corner and he might have a target market then of landlords and letting agents for that service. Let's say that he's got another service and service number three is rewires. Well, his target market for those rewires might be property developers 
that are house bashing and he wants them to bring them in to do rewires on all their properties. So now he's got a property investor that is, or a property renovator that is a target market. Maybe his fourth service is if it's solar PV and if he's fitting solar panels on people's houses, then is other target market could be that f growing family whose electricity bill is sky high and now it's growing families in domestic properties that have got four bedroom detached houses that are his target market. Or maybe his fifth service could be electrical charging point installations. And now he's got a different target market because these could be business owners whose accountants told them to go and buy an electric car to get their corporation tax bill down. And now that business owner needs an electric charging point. So what I'm saying here is, is an electrician, but he's got five different services and each one of those services now has a different target market. And that different target market has got to be laser focused and marketed to with that product and service that that target market needs with the right messaging that is going out to that target market. Are you with me? So instead of saying, oh, we are an electrical contractor based in Sheffield and we do A, B, C, D, E, F and G, who wants to buy all this lot? That's too generic. That's going to land on deaf ears. Nobody's going to take a, an ounce of notice about that type of marketing. However, if they got laser focused on creating the target market for a particular product or service then got all of the marketing message right that attracts that target market for that product and service, then you're going to get success because now you're getting laser focused on your marketing because you know who you're marketing to. Let's look at a plumber and a heating engineer, right? You might have five services that are profitable, right? So you might have a general plumbing service, where you're fixing leaky showers or putting stop taps outside or ball valves or whatever you're doing on toilets, right? General plumbing works. So you would identify what that target market looks like. You then might fit bathrooms, right? So you might go in and take old bathroom suites out and do a complete new bathroom refit. Listen, the person that wants the bathroom refit is going to be a different target market and a different message that you need to put out there to the person that wants the general plumbing. The third service that a plumbing and eating engineer might offer is a boiler care plan or a service plan. Right. So who is that target market who's actually looking for that service? The fourth one might be boiler installations. Right. Okay. So who's the target market that wants the boiler installation. The fifth one could be heat pumps. Okay, so who's the target market and where can we find those in the highest concentration that wants heat pumps? Are you with me? So again, we're getting laser focus. We're not saying, oh, we're a plumbing and eating engineer and we do everything because everything, you're going to sell nothing. The more laser focused, the more niche that you can be on identifying who this target market is, is perfect. So mistake number two is stop marketing to everybody and get laser focused and niche on who your target market is. Now, I've got a podcast episode, which is podcast episode number 11 called How to Identify Your B2B and Your B2C Target Markets Using the Nine Characteristics. And what I want you to do, if you don't know where to start on identifying who your target market is and what these nine characteristics are, you need to go and check out episode number 11. Because in that, I give you your B2B target market and the nine characteristics that you need to work on if you're going to pull together a business-to-business -to -business target market 
for any products or service that you're offering. Likewise, I give you the nine characteristics to a B2C business to consumer target market for whatever products or service you're offering for that. So my suggestion is at the end of this podcast, nip over to episode 11 and go and consume that content. Mistake number three. I want you to write down content and messaging. Content and messaging. Now, we've already established that you probably don't know what these nine characteristics are that make up your target market. So you have been marketing to just about anybody. So because of this, the content that you're creating is wrong because it's too generic. And because the content is generic, the messaging on the content, as in the title of that blog, as in what you're saying in that video, as in what is on your website, right, is the messaging is wrong because it's too generic. So what we've got to start to think about is... Once we've identified that target market for that particular product or service, what we then need to get laser focused and niche down on is the messaging that we need to put out there that's going to start to attract that particular target market to our business. Because again, the example that we've just used about the electrician is the messaging and the content that we're going to write or the content that we're going to be speaking about in that video for the target market who's after the rewire is a completely different message and a completely different what we're going to say in that video to someone who wants solar panels. Are you with me? The messaging is completely different. You're not going to start to market to people who wants a rewire or Mrs. Jones ramp corner who just wants a plug socket moving. You're not going to put a message in front of them about solar panels and how they can save the planet and reduce your carbon footprint. Oh yeah. Because there's a disconnect between that market and the messaging. Whereas when we get the market right, and then we get the messaging right to provide that product and service to that specific target market, then, then they start to take notice. Because when we start to get the target market and the messaging right, it's like putting content out there on social media, as an example, that literally punches the target market on the end of the nose and says, right, we know this is you. We know this is what you're looking for. This is what we've got. It's like straight into the main vein. We're punching them on the end of the nose and telling them to take notice of us because we know that what we're offering is unique to that particular demographic. Now, when we know this, it then helps us when we're putting together things like social media posts and we're writing the post and we're getting the image that supports that post because the messaging on that image, the image itself is going to dictate and, di and, and show what that product or service is. It's also going to help when we start to script our videos out because, again, we know who we're calling out in that video. Let me just give you an example straight off the top of my head of what I mean by calling people out in the video. Let's look at the Sparky and the Solar PV. And again, I'm coming straight off at the top of my head with this. You could then be stood outside the ideal property that you want to fit solar panels on. And you could say something, and again, this is I'm just ad-libbing this, I've not scripted it. You could say, today we've pulled up at this four-bedroom detached property in Sheffield, and you can even mention the postcode area if you wanted, if you wanted to be that specific. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be fitting a four-kilowatt system to this family home. And the reason why we fit in this four kilowatt system is they've got a growing family, they've got teenagers, their electricity bills are going sky high, they work from home, so they've got laptops and computers on, blah, blah, blah. You call out your target market. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reducing their 
bills by approximately this amount each month. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to fit 16 solar panels on this elevation. We fit in a battery storage unit here. The inverter is going here. And oh, by the way, he's also uh, runs his own business. And for that, and the tax reasons of getting an electric car, we're also fitting an EV charging point and we're going to be fitting this Zappy charging point here. Bang. What have you just done? You've just called out that specific target market that will be considering solar panels and the reasons why they're considering solar panels. Because they're a business owner, they've just got an electric car, or they are a family, growing family. Do you see what I'm saying? You get the point of what I'm doing here. Likewise, it also helps with creating content on your website and getting the messaging right on your website. We can then start to create dedicated lead magnets that we can then put on your website that give information away about those solar panels and the top 10 mistakes people make when choosing solar panels. Right. We can now get content together that can sit on our website. People can download it. But when they download it, we capture an email address and we capture a mobile number, which then triggers an automated email and SMS marketing campaign all around the benefits of fitting solar panels. You see where I'm going with this? All because we get laser focused on the messaging around that product and service. So I want you to go back and look at all the content that you're creating. Look at all the social media posts that you've been putting out. And have they been laser specific on who the target market is? And then is the messaging around, let's say, those posts absolutely niche to the product and service that you want to sell them or is everything generic? Likewise, if you put in adverts in magazines, might be a local church magazine or a glossy magazine or or even a, a, a trade magazine, don't be generic. Nobody wants an electrician. Nobody wants a plumber. Nobody wants a joiner. What they want is a specific problem solving, which means it's a specific service that they are looking for. So start to niche down on all of the content that you're creating by calling out the target market with the right messaging. Mistake number four. I want you to write the two words down, pain points, pain points, right? And what I mean by this is you've got to stop constantly selling the product or service that you're offering, right? Because in reality, nobody wants to buy a white box that goes underneath the staircase cupboard, which is called a boiler. I mean, come on, how unsexy a boiler's unless you're a plumbing and heating engineer. Nobody wants to buy a boiler. Nobody wants to buy solar panels. Nobody wants to buy an, uh, an extension. Nobody wants to buy a new ceiling being skimmed. Nobody wants to buy a landscape garden. Nobody wants to buy a burglar alarm. Nobody wants to buy these things, right? What they want to buy is a solution to a problem that they've got. So let me say this again. You've got to stop selling the products and services and stop ramming what it is that you fit down people's throats because nobody wants to buy that. What they're buying is they've got a problem and they need to buy the solution to solve the problem that they've got. Write this down. There's only two reasons why people, consumers, generally buy. Reason number one is want, W-A-N-T. It's a want that they want to buy something, right? So they don't need it. It's not going to like be life-threatening or the business is not just going to cave in if they don't have it. They want it. So let me put this into context on how we might use something that we want. Right, I'm guessing that you've all got vans, right? And your van's clean and it's tidy 
and it runs right and it's past its MOT, right? And you've got a decent van. But you want to buy a new van because it's going to look more professional. It's going to bring your branding. You know, you're pulling to merchants and you can boast and ego trip kicks in. And, you know, you've got this lovely new van and everybody thinks that you're doing well, right? And you want to treat yourself for all your hard work. So you don't need a new van. You might want a new van, right? But then there's the flip side, And the flip side of this and the second reason I want you to write down need. It's a necessity. It's a need. It's a must, right? So let's put the boot on the other foot and use the van as an example again, right? Your van, right, has now broken down and engine's blown and it's going to cost you an absolute small fortune to have a new engine fitted in your van or... It's an older van and it's miserably failed its MOT and it's going to want a boatload of work doing on it, right? Now you've got a problem that needs to be fixed, right? And that problem is if I don't get a van quick and I don't get back on road, I'm going to fall behind on my jobs. It's going to cause me grief with my customers. I'm not going to make any money. My diary's all going to be screwed up. I need a van. So what do you do? You start doing your research to find a new van quick. And what we've got to understand in a trades and construction business is there's not many services, regardless of trade, profession, industry, or sector you belong to, there's not many services that we offer that people want, right? Oh, wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice for us to buy a new boiler? Nobody wants to do that, Right. The usually the services that we offer are a need. They are a necessity, right? To solve a problem that somebody has now got. And when somebody has now got a problem that needs to be solved, what do they do? They take to Google. And you've got a website that's SEO to the max and they find your website and it's got the 16 fundamental features in that turns it into an inquiry generating machine. And all of a sudden you get a new lead. Or they go, do you know what? I've been seeing these posts and these really good informative social media videos that this company's been putting out about this particular service they offer that will solve my problem. I need to speak to them because they've become the authority, because they've become memorable, because they've not been trying to sell to me. All they've been doing is giving valuable information and knowledge out for free. And I've remembered who they are. I want them. So what you've got to start to introduce that I'm an absolute master at is selling the pain. Stop selling the product and service. And once you've identified your target market, we then need to identify what are the pain points of that target market. In other words, why do they need to buy our product and service? What's causing them the pain? What's causing them the unrest? What's keeping them awake at night? What's going to force them to start to turn to Google and start to search keywords to find our product or service? What is that pain that they're experiencing? That's the golden ticket. Pain point marketing. And when you start to look at everything that I do and I teach and you start to look at all the marketing that I do, every bit of marketing that I've got going out there has got pain in it. Take this podcast. Listen, let's be honest. Let me be total transparent and honest with you. Look at this podcast, right? What am I doing? I know my target market is. It's you, the tradesperson, the tradesman, the tradeswoman, the construction company. I know you are. And I also know what pain that you're experiencing, right? You're not generating enough leads. You are not making enough profit. You're working long hours. You're sacrificing that quality time that you should have been spending at evenings and weekends with your family, doing your quotes and your paperwork till midnight. I know that you're employing the wrong staff and the wrong subcontractors that's causing you grief and pain. Are you with me? I know what your pain points are because I've had them. I'm one of you. But what do I do in this podcast? I drill down on that pain. I tell you what that pain is you're experiencing. 
And I'm not trying to sell you anything at all on this podcast. I don't need to sell anything. My pipeline and my waiting lists are full. But what I am doing in identifying my target market and talking about the pain, but then giving you the solution on how to solve it, I'm building up rapport. I'm building up, hopefully, you're getting to know me, you're getting to like me, you're getting to trust me. And when you see all the examples and all the results that I get for business owners, at some point, the pain of you growing your business is going to become too much. You're going to be fed up to back teeth at some point of working your bollocks off and not making money. You're going to be fed up of coming home and ignoring your kids because you're staying up till midnight doing your paperwork. You're going to be fed up of investing time and effort and money into marketing strategies that do not work. You're going to need to find a solution. You're going to need to find the problem, Right? Where am I hoping that you're going to come to when that pain is too much to bear? Me. Why? Because I understand your pain and I'm giving you the solution on how to solve it. And as and when that pain is too much for you, the likelihood is you may come to me to solve the problem. I'm a master at it. I teach it all my inner circle members. You need to do the same. You need to identify what that target market's pain points are and then you need to market them pain points and you need to scratch it and you need to itch it to get people to understand, actually, I've got that problem. I've got that pain. And if I go to them, they can solve it for me. Do you get what I'm saying? And I've used this now for 18 years. Let me give you an example. With my building company where we predominantly did lofts, while all my competitors were out there having photos on the websites of like an extension being built that looked like an absolute bomb site where they got a skip on drive and they got ton bags of sand and crush a run. They got slate lat all over. They got mixer on drive. They got a ladder going up to scaffolding. They got gobbo all over, lens of timber all over it show. While ever they got that on their website, and then a little bit later when social media came in, they'd be all posting photos of the jobs that they got ongoing. While ever they were doing that and basically selling a fucking bomb site to their potential customers. I mean, come on, who wants to buy that? I didn't do that. I did the complete opposite. I was saying things like this. Listen, have you got children and particularly a growing family and teenagers? And I know the ad because I knew my target market. Do you live in Sheffield in these three postcode areas, S10, S11 and S17? Because ultimately, I were that niche with my marketing that I wouldn't work out of them three postcode areas. So I'd spell it out. Remember, it's in the messaging. So have you got a growing family? Have you got teenage kids that are treating your house like a bombsite? Do you walk into your kid's bedroom and it's like a complete and utter mess and there's crap all over and there's half-eaten half pizzas in boxes that you find underneath bed? Do you move the curtains and find a glass of milk that's covered in mould that's been hiding there for weeks behind, yeah? Have they got the homework literally everywhere? If you have, and this is you, and look what I'm doing here. I've called out my target market with the right messaging with a pain point. If this is as you, and this is what your kid's bedroom looks like, and we'd have photographs or video clips of bedrooms that look like they've been ransacked, right? I'm sure if you've got teenage kids, you know where I'm going with this. If this is as you, have you considered increasing your living space by adding a loft conversion onto your property that's going to benefit, 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 benefit. And what I would then have is I would have video testimonials of my happy customers saying something like this. Do you know what? Before we contacted Craig, 
we were running out of space. We've got a growing family and there were stuff all over the show. They were outgrowing the bedrooms. You know, we love the area that we live in, but we couldn't afford to move house to a larger property. So we saw Craig's video or we saw Craig's website or we saw a post from Craig talking about how we could actually stay in the same house, expand our living space get the space that we needed at the fraction of a cost of moving house. We love it next to his neighbours. The kids are settled in school. We just needed more space. And when we saw Craig talking about, do you look like this, but you could actually have that, then that's what we wanted. So we contacted Craig and you know what? They were absolutely brilliant because they came out and their communication was amazing. We got automated emails and texts letting us know what were happening. Every single day, we got an update with photos or videos sent through to us showing us what they'd done that particular day. They were on time. They were on budget. They were clean. They were tidy. They were reliable. Do you know what? Anybody that's struggling with tight space because you've got a growing family, you need to speak to Craig. You need to speak to Craig. Can you see what we did? So while other my competitors were posting photos about extensions that look like bomb sites saying, who wants to buy an extension? We do extensions, basement conversions, garage conversions, loft conversions, and being generic, trying to market to everyone. We didn't do that. We identified where our target, who our target market was that needed loft conversions. We identified the postcode areas and the parts of Sheffield that they lived in. We got the marketing message right that when we put that marketing message out, it punched them on the end of the nose and said, take a look at what we're doing. And what we did do is we didn't sell the products or service, i.e. extensions and loft conversions. We sold pain. We sold pain. Does this feel like you? And we gave them the pain points in the marketing and the messaging that we had out. Are you with me? Completely different. Backed up with video testimonials that, that were talking about the pain they had before they started working with us. What we actually did during the job and what they've been left with and the benefits. I mean, come on. We turned our... We turned our happy customers and clients into a sales team that sold our business for us. We didn't have to sell it because they sold it for us. Why? Because we knew how to market our business. And this is exactly the same as what you need to do. So what I need you to do now is sit down and write down what are all the pain that your customers experiencing? What's the problem they've got? Why do they want this particular product or service? What is it that they're trying to solve? And once you know what that is, it's like gold dust. Because trust me, pain point marketing is something that hardly anybody knows about. You know about it now, so you've got an unfair advantage over your competitors. But pain point marketing only works if you've identified the target market and you know what messaging you're going to put out there. And that messaging is all around the pain. And then when we get that and we start to create videos and we start to get images to support that messaging, perhaps that we're putting on social media, then bingo, that's when the leads start to come in. Also, remember, all this content then can be put into onto your website. So your message on, on your website becomes different. It can then go into your adverts in your church magazines or your glossy magazines or your trade magazines. Are you with me? We can put it absolutely everywhere and it completely transforms your entire marketing strategy. Mistake number five. Write down the word website, right? Write down the word website. And what I mean by this is the call to action or otherwise known as CTA on most of your marketing and advertising, whether that's your Facebook business page, you've got a link to your website. Whether you're handing your business card out at a networking event, it's got a link to your website. 
Whether it's the advert in that local church magazine or that leaflet that you've just pushed through someone's letterbox, it's got a link to your website. So the vast majority of time that you are putting a call to action of what you want people to do on any of your marketing content, nine times out of 10, you're going to send them back to your website. But this is where the next problem lies. Because for most of you, you might be doing the hard work and driving traffic off social media or from that ad or from that leaflet or from that Google advert. You might be doing all that and driving people off the platforms back to your website, which is your ultimate sales tool. But because your website is so poorly designed and it's lacking the 16 fundamental features that every website must have built into it if you're going to turn it into an inquiry generating machine because you haven't got them features on, then your website is bouncing traffic. In other words, they get into your website, can't find what they're looking for or they're confused or it looks shit and therefore they're bouncing, they're leaving your website. Now think about everything that we've just covered so far. What is the point of going away and working on all these four other areas, right, to drive traffic back to your website if you know deep down that your website is pants, right? Because let's face it, I think some of you listening to this will know deep down that your website's really poor. And if you think it's poor and it's not converting, what on earth do your customers think about you and your business? Is that really the right impression that you want to be giving out? You've done the hard work and you've created that amazing content and you've driven traffic off social media, but then you're sending them back to a website that's never going to convert them in a million years. So the website has got to be worked on. It's part of this formula. This episode's called Five Killer Mistakes Stopping You From Generating Leads, right? Well, to generate leads, you're going to need an all-singing, an all-dancing website that has the 16 features on it. And if you add these 16 features to your website... I absolutely guarantee that your conversion and the leads that come through your website will be an avalanche of leads. Now, there are many reasons why your website is not converting. And there are reasons why it's not generating your leads. So let me share with you what I consider to be the top eight reasons why your website is failing you. And I know that some of you have spent very little on your website. Maybe some of you have actually gone to something like Wix or GoDaddy and actually had a go at building your own website. And good on you if you have, but that's never going to make you a millionaire, is it? That's never going to generate your leads, you banging up a, a random website with no strategy to it. There'll be others out there that have spent, I don't know, a thousand pound on a website. And let me tell you now, you've just wasted it because you've just built yourself what I call a brochure website, which is basically an online brochure that tells everybody what you do about your business. It's never going to convert. For others, you might have spent three or four grand and, and been promised the world. And then all of a sudden, your website's not generating you that lead, them leads, but you've invested decent money. And now you're left feeling ripped off and frustrated that you've got this website that looks nice, but again, it doesn't generate your leads. So wherever you are, whatever you've done, these are the main eight reasons why this will be happening. There's a lot more, but these are the main eight. So number one is your branding. Your branding is turning people off, not turning people on. In other words, your branding looks cheap, it looks amateurish, it looks like you've done it, or it looks like you've given it someone on Fiverr.com who's knocked it up for a couple of hundred quid. In other words, you haven't invested into your business brand that spells the quality and determines the vision of where your business is going. Your business brand looks like it did when you first set up your business, when you came up with this brand, when you had a no experience in business or marketing, when you had 
no budget and you've done it on a shoestring budget, but that brand now as your business starts to grow is hanging over you and you're carrying this old amateurish day one one man person band brand around with you when your business has grown but your branding's not grown with it now it's vitally important that you get the right brand that you get the right company name that you get the right colors that you get the right font family that you get the right slogan that you get the right emblem or symbol that's going to form part of your logo that is incredibly important And if you've not taken any type of psychology into the creating of that brand and you've done it yourself or your mate's done it for a couple of hundred quid, then I'm telling you now, majority of the time, you are carrying an old brand around with you that's never going to get you to where you want to be. Now, I want you to write down episode number 20. Because in episode number 20, that's called how to build a brand that will generate your leads in three simple steps. In that, I go into detail about your branding, why it's important, and what these three different types of brands are that you must bring into your business. And if you don't bring these three brands into your business and you just stick with whatever you've knocked up whenever you knocked it up, the likelihood is it's turning people off. You never realise this because you are emotionally connected to your brand and your business name because you've come up with it, you've grown your business, you've conceived it and you don't want anybody thinking that your brand's wrong or it's not giving the right impression out. But trust me, most of the time your branding's not giving the right impression out. So episode 20, I want you to go and check that out at the end of this episode. So mistake number one or reason number one, is your branding's not right. Reason number two why your website's not generating your leads is your navigation is all over the place. And what I mean by navigation is this. You are not sat next to every single person that lands on your website. So you can't tell them where to navigate to and what you want them to click on and what pages you want them to visit first or what videos you want them to click on first. You've got no idea where they're going to go. So the navigation of how your website is built, particularly the homepage of your website is vitally important because there's a certain way in which you lay your homepage out that navigates that potential customer or client around your homepage and actually gets them to do what you actually want them to do when they land on that homepage. So it's like you're sat next to everyone that lands on it, whispering in their ear, right, scroll down and click on that video. Then once you've clicked on that video, I want you to scroll down and and do this. Then once you've done that, I want you to click this button. Then once you click that button, it's going to head over to a vetting form. And now I want you to fill out that vetting form. Are you with me? So the designers that's designed your website are probably not designing it with psychology, again, in mind, and navigation in mind. In fact, most web designers don't know how to build the navigation on a website. They're just winging it themselves. So step number two is the navigation's awful and you're confusing people. Reason number three, There are no introduction videos on your website. You've got to have an introduction video in today's day and age on your website so people can get to know who you are, what you do, what problems and pain points you solve and how you can benefit their business or their life or their family or their home or whatever it is you're doing, right? You've got to have an introduction video. People are buying from you. They're not buying from a logo. They want to see you. Are you with me? They want to get to know you. They want to find out more about your business. And when they can go onto YouTube or TikTok or Instagram and see all these reels about all these different companies, but you ain't got an introduction web video on your website, it's like, come on. It's like, this is that old school marketing that I'm talking about. So number three, you've probably not got a 
introduction video sat right at the top of your homepage, which is the first thing that people should land on when they land on your website. Reason number four, no trust indicators. No trust indicators. And what I mean by a trust indicator is how are you building up trust on your website with that random person that's landed on it? Because people are never going to buy off you if they don't trust you, right? So how are you building trust on your website? And I'll tell you now, the four most powerful ways of being able to build trust on your website is number one, you need video testimonials, a minimum of three video testimonials on your website, ideally around different services that you offer, because each, remember, each customer is buying a different service off you that's solving a different problem that ultimately is a different target market. So if you've got, let's say, three profitable services that you offer, you need a video testimonial from at least one happy customer for each of the services that you offer because it's a different message, it's a different pain point, and it's a different target market. So number one, you need video testimonials. Number two, you need case studies, right? Before and after pictures and a write-up of that job. And when you do the write-up, guess what you're going to put in your messaging? You're going to call out your target market. You're going to hit them with the right messaging. You're going to hit them with pain points. But then you're going to show them the solution to the problem that you've fixed for that customer. And you would have a photograph of you shaking hands with that customer, maybe handing Mrs. Jones a bouquet of flowers as a thank you gesture, which all builds trust. So you need case studies, right? Number three, Five star glowing reviews need adding to everything, right? And I'm talking about you need to get more reviews than your competitors. So I want you having 300, 400, 500, 1,000 five star glowing five star reviews off Google being pulled through onto your website. So every time someone leaves you a re review, it pops up on your website. Mrs. Jones left you a review one hour ago. Are you with me? So we're building that trust by having more reviews than our competitors. And the fourth trust indicator are things that most of you may well have got on, which are accreditations or governing bodies that you belong to. Because the more accreditations or the more logos that are well-known and renowned, such as Gas safe, NICIC, maybe Federation of Master Builders, maybe Trades Freedom Club. We've got a logo that you can all have on your website. Maybe MCS accreditation. Whatever bodies you belong to, you need to get them on because all that lot forms part of trust. Now, some of you will be going, Craig, I've got that on. I've got my gas safe logo on. Brilliant. Have you got more reviews than everybody else and they, did this, they are they displayed? How many case studies have you got? Please tell me you've got a minimum of 20 case studies on your website. And have you got the video testimonials? And the answer to that is probably not. So just having your gas safe logo on your website is great but that's never going to convert leads like you want it to because you're missing all of the other trust indicators. Number five, your website is all over the place. In other words, when somebody clicks a link, let's say on Facebook or LinkedIn, and you're sending them back to your website, they're expecting to see a specific product or service that's unique to them and how you're going to solve the problem that they've got. But a lot of people are sending traffic back to the website and the website is just rammed full of absolutely every product or service that they've got and it's all over the show. So you're driving people back to your website, but because of 
reason two, the navigation's all over the place. And because of reason number five, they can't find instantly what they're looking for. And they've clicked on a few pages and they still can't find what they're looking for. They're getting impatient and they're bouncing. Reason number six. Write down faceless company. In today's day and age, people do not want to deal with faceless companies. They want to deal and they want to know who they're speaking to, who's on the other end of that phone. They want to know who's going to come out and do that home or site survey. They want to know who's doing the quote. They want to know who's going to be coming and getting the tools out and working in their home. They want to know you. So, Websites that have got no photographs or videos of the business owner or the team or an introduction page or an about us page about the team. And you've got no images of you on your website. It's like, hang on a minute. Who is this business? I don't even know who they are. I'm not happy about this. Are you with me? So you've got to make sure that you've got videos and at worst case images of you and your team members on your website so that people can see that you're a real company and they know who they're going to be dealing with. Reason number seven, no authority positioning. In other words, what I mean by authority is why should somebody buy from you over and above your competitor? What have you got authority-wise that your competitors haven't got? How are you more qualified? Why do you stand out more? Where are your guides or ebooks on your website? Because when you've got guides and ebooks on your website, you can now become an author of a set of digital guides. You've now become an author. That raises your authority. How many awards have you won? Tell me you're putting in for business awards, local business awards. How many awards have you won? Where are all the press releases where you've got a PR company to do different articles on you and send them out to all the local newspapers, perhaps, in your area, where you've got the press and the, blo and, and the articles on your website? How many times have you been on radio or TV? And come on, it's not hard to get on radio. If you've got a decent if you've got a decent story to share and you contact a radio station and say that you want to add this value to it, likewise, if you've got a PR company writing articles and sending them out to local newspapers and magazines, they're crying out for new stories, positive new stories that can they can share. So you can quite easily get onto your radio station. I'm a regular on Fix Radio, the builder station, right? I'm a regular on that station. Are you with me? Are you the most reviewed company? Can you give some stats to say, listen, we are the most trusted and reviewed company in our area all that lot builds authority so where's the authority positioning on your website and the final reason number eight i'm going to share with you is you will be without a shadow of a doubt missing the vast majority of the 16 fundamental features that i keep talking about that you need on your website because without having these 16 on, you're going to really struggle to turn your website into an inquiry generating machine. You may well get traffic to it from your business card, from your leaflet, from your paid ad, from social media, from organic SEO, where people have found your website on Google. But when they land on it, if you've not got the 16 features on it, you're going to struggle converting people. So with that in mind, they are the eight main reasons why your website won't be converting. To get the 16 features that I keep talking about, I want you to head over to episode number 16. Number 16. Because that 
episode is called the 16 killer features that you need to turn your website into an inquiry generating machine. And if you start to add them on, then you're going to convert more of the traffic that's landing on your website. So your action tasks from this episode are as follows. Number one, I want you to go to mistake number one, which is old school marketing. And I want you to look at what needs to be improved, what you're currently doing. And then what I want you to think about is, right, what are all these new marketing strategies that Craig T keeps talking about from AI to lead magnets to SMS marketing? You know, what are all these strategies? And remember, they're all shared in other episodes on this podcast So action task number one is you're going to go and do a review of everything that you're currently doing, and then you're going to know what type of marketing you need to start to introduce so you don't get left behind. Action task number two is I want you to go to mistake number two, which is your target market. And I want you to go to episode number 11, right? And then go and identify who your target market is. Because without identifying that, we know now that we're just going to be sending random crap out to random people and expecting some of it to stick and it's not going to work. You're never going to scale your business by putting random messages out to random people. Action task number three is I want you to go back to mistake number three, which is your content and your messaging. And I want you to go and look at all the content that you put out there from your brochures to your social media posts, to your websites, to your vlogs, to your blogs, wherever you're putting content out there. Look at the messaging. And is that messaging too broad? Is it too like for anyone? Or are we getting a bit laser specific now on the each product or service that we are now offering and then start to look at the messaging and the tone and how do you need to now start to get laser focused with the right messaging, with the right words that you're writing or the right videos that you're shooting and even the right images that support that product or service. What is your messaging like and how are you going to improve it? Action task number four is I want you to go back to mistake number four which is pain points. And I want you to identify all of the pain. What's causing them them sleepless nights? What's itching them? What's irritating them? Why do they need, why do they need you and your business? It's to solve a problem that they've got. So identify what the problems are and then identify what is the pain they're experiencing that leads them for searching for a company like you to solve that problem that they've got. Your fifth action task is to go to mistake number five and I want you to look at your website and look at those eight reasons that I've just given you on why I believe your website's not generating your leads. I want you to identify those eight areas, but then I also want you to go and listen to episode number 16, which is where I share those 16 killer features that you need to have on your website. Action task number six. I want you to come over to our Trades Freedom Club Facebook group and community and tell us that you've listened to episode number 26 and then tell us what is it that you've learned from this episode and what is it that you're going to do to go away and take action on? What do you need to do to go away and take action on? Come into the group and tell us. I'll hold you accountable. Everybody else can make, hold you accountable for making sure that you get these action tasks done. Because remember, this is the foundation that everything else is going to be built on moving forward. Now, if you're not already a member of our Trades Freedom Club, thriving Facebook group and community, Click the link in the description and the show notes and come and join thousands of other positive tradesmen and women that are all there helping and supporting each other to grow and scale their businesses. And remember, the doors are now open for you to apply to join our inner circle. 
Thank you for joining me on yet another podcast episode. And remember, the results that you are looking for is in the work that you're avoiding. I'll see you on next week's episode. Thank you. Thank you.